Hello and welcome to Baited Expectations. I'm Pi by Pi. We're joined by Valina, Kit and Cat Noodle and Brittlene. In this episode, we are thrilled to deep dive into Path of Exile's latest announcement for the upcoming expansion Echoes of the Atlas and the accompanying Challenge League Ritual. Yesterday, we got a lot of information in Grinding Gear Games' live stream of the announcement. We'll try and cover as much ground as possible. Our topics today include the mechanics of the Echoes expansion and the new boss it introduces the maven how the ritual challenge league might play out big changes to ascendancies new skills how this 3.13 update to poe is different including this live stream announcement and many other tidbits as as we can squeeze in if you're enjoying the podcast please be sure to like comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss the next one but first let's catch up with our co-hosts so valina what was your initial reaction to yesterday's announcement I'm ecstatic. I'm overwhelmed. I have concerns. I am extremely, I, I'm just, I feel so much hype for 10 bosses. 10 bosses, 10 of them, 10 all together. Can I do like 10 guardians? Just do, and then me, I won't Wait, do that. Like 10 eradicators, huh? I'll die. No. <laughs> but you can we have dupes and okay we'll we'll get into that later well, yeah um, yeah so i'm i'm ex- i am i'm ecstatic overwhelmed mildly concerned there. awesome <laughs> love to hear it and noodle what was your reaction to the announcement well it was a little early for me so normally i don't have any emotional range at that time but i still got uh insanely hyped just i was actually in bk's stream which was awesome. And so we were watching it and there was just, for one, my brain couldn't quite handle all the information. It felt like it was going super fast. And I was like, whoa, whoa, there's so many things being added. Um, I've always wanted more boss incentive. So I thought both the expansion and the league look just awesome. They look so good. I'm so hyped. So, so glad to hear it. And Brittany, what did you think of the uh, expansion announcement? It's taken me the better part of two days to sort of digest everything. And the more I sort of like think through everything, the more excited I get. Because at first, of course, it's just that huge info dump, right? And it sort of leaves you like drooling with your brains dribbling out of your ears. But like Mm -hmm. now as you start to start through the information and realize the different implications, like it just seems really good. I actually am very hyped, not only for the change up in in game, but very excited for the league as well. And, you know, bossing is my favorite content in the game. And I've had problems with the current in game. So like a new parallel to the in game teaming with bosses is automatically something I'm excited about. I'm so glad to guys, you guys are all excited. I'm, I, I myself woke up about five, five minutes before the announcement um, after one hour of sleep and after listening to Chris, you know, Chris talk his way through it, which is, you know, at the speed of light. Um, and I, you could hear that he was trying to talk slower. <laughs> um, I was like, yeah, my brain is dribbling out of my ears right now, but I'm really excited. <laughs> Um, and the, yeah, the Q&A helped a lot as well. But yeah, just I heard all the stuff about the bosses and the like the sheer um, immense volume, the size of it uh, just seemed, I, I don't know, I could just anticipate how excited other people would be. I know so many people are really, really interested in like a more challenging end game. And I'm just so excited for the community to have something to work with. Um, and, 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 you know, people like you, BK and Noodle, and Val, all of you guys love bossing. <laughs> In fact, I love bossing, but like not that good at it. But yeah, anyway, I'm very excited too. Uh, but also <laughs> with the brain dribbling, it was great. Um, let's carry on with the topics then. Let's get stuck into Echoes. So this endgame in- expansion introduces a lot of additional content. What do we think of this new content and the what seems to be a boss rush mechanic? I've never heard the phrase before. I'm still feel like I'm very new to gaming even um, five years in but yeah boss rushing uh what bosses would you guys uh avoid doing if you were gonna do this mechanic um let's start with BK I think as the most excited boss bosser I think um maybe. this league or this in-game I should say in this sort of mechanic kind of delivers essentially what I felt was missing from Metamorph League 
that sort of like next step up of battle boss or boss battle like amalgamations and i wouldn't largely be surprised if this was like a continuation of the work that was done in metamorph league but we can get into that later um i don't want to avoid any bosses every single boss is just an opportunity for different like mechanics lining up so the one thing that i enjoyed about the uber elder encounter was the fact that like through attrition and through defeating that encounter over and over again you would learn what to do when certain mechanics would line up and sort of get you in a pinch and only through like gaining that knowledge over time and by doing the encounter over and over again like you sort of would get mastery over those sorts of situations and that's sort of like my favorite part of learning boss like encounters in general but when you multiply this by 10 and you've got all of their range of mechanics and as of now i don't know if you can like purposely capture certain bosses or can't mm. um it would be really cool if you had sort of like agency over what bosses get shoved in there but if you don't i'm perfectly okay with that too because it always presents like new combinations of challenges mm. and that's really a good thing too because without going into too much of a rant here like it's a really unique departure from the standard hierarchy of bosses that we've seen for so long where it's like four shaper guardians then the big bad like shaper had guardians elder had guardians cyrus has conquerors and I think this is something we kind of learned from like Oshabi because the tier four seeds were things that you could plant like multiples of and then have map mods on top to make it like really difficult and scary. I really wanted so to ask about like, the map mods. <laughs> yeah, it, it kind of goes in that same direction since you can craft the uh, the 10 boss invitations. So like, I think it's good. I think that we're kind of breaking away from this like four little bad, bads, one big bad like archetype here. Yeah, it, it's, it's an awesome change to the, like, I guess the meta that POE set for themselves and probably a following from the ARPG format, maybe. Um, as someone who has never played any other ARPGs, I can't... A, uh, fuck, I'm really stuffing up my words today. Um, Arbkas. Arb, Arbkas? Anyways, so I don't know if this is what, like, Diablo or any of them have done before, so I don't know. Do you guys know? The only thing that was kind of like this was there was a mod for Torchlight 2, which barely anyone played or cared about. There was like a, the Synergies mod allowed you to go into a separate arena that would have just like a constant wave after wave of different boss fights kind of spawning in together that you would have to defeat. But nothing near the intensity scaling and sort of like damage input and output that's going to be required for this. Mm. I'm, yeah, I'm curious to see how map mods affect it for sure. Um Okay, let's let's go over to Vel. Vel, what are you what are you thinking of the end game? No oh. Katava, because she's too huge. She takes up like sixty percent of the arena. You can't see shit. Like they showed her in the preview, you can barely see anything. Like her face or his face? Sorry, Katava. A at the end. I always say her. Is I his face? Katavo. You know, Katavo. Katavo. Right? Like yeah. <laughs> it's, you know. You know. I, I always. It's it's kind of a problem I have. Same with same with Chayula. That's why I call him Chayulo. That's the only way I remember. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Chayula's not a one. I love it. I can't help it. I can't it's help Chayula it. It's Chayula or dude? Like, Chayula's a dude. Mm -hmm. Chayula yeah, is I a thought, dude. What? No! Yeah, Chayula's a dude. I have been the, using the Ash and Ole Nicole. Nicole are the ladies, yeah. yep. Yeah. I thought there were three ladies. I thought it was mm -hmm. Ash. Tol I feel like this leader. makes the Maven more and more and more significant. I thought there were mm -hmm. more bosses. So... I saw they showed in the preview Katava and literally like the head of Katava is like 20% of your arena. I have I said, a screenshot no of that no little way. section because he did it like mm. there's one of the, the trailers editing shots is like from right behind the player. Yeah. He looks fucking yeah. good. Yeah, you it's can really see, good. You can see Katava in the background and then whatever boss it's fighting there and you're like. I think Malachi is there too. Yeah. And, uh, maybe Arakali. Uh-huh. Maybe Ar Yeah. Yeah, and and so any boss that's super enormous, and mainly it's just Katavo. <laughs> so really, I just want to avoid if I can. I think it, don't the ritual stones let you put a boss into it? Then you can put in your map device with a map, mm -hmm. so you can pick a boss to put in there, right? I think for the league, yeah, you can take one boss. Uh, and use it like a bestiary orb 
and put it in your map device and then it'll be in the rituals but yeah I'm mega confused by ritual and we'll get it stuck into that one in a little bit like that's our next topic but yeah. <laughs> so so really for me any boss that's enormous that's going to take up the uh, a large portion of like green i don't want to do it the only yeah. for that reason it's just because I, I hate the fact like there are so many angles that i already can't see from in this game and I get my mold about them, and that's just one I can't, I cannot, <laughs> I can't mold about that. Yeah, there's a lot of bosses too that either have like certain features where they have like a something you can't really, you, you don't do any interruptions of any sort in this game. Like there's not an interrupt button, like there is in like MMOs, mm -hmm. but like for the, I think it used to be called Shock and Horror. It, I, I don't remember what it's called now, but the squid that's got like mm -hmm. the tractor beam that you have to LOS. Yeah. Or the goddess that has the degen that you have to LOS. Like, mm -hmm. it's Wait. a big fucking circle. What are you going to LOS on? Like, yep, my question is what is LOS? Stand <laughs> Do you put up sorry? ice wall and hide behind it? Like, I don't know. What is LOS? Line of sight. Line of sight. Okay. Line cool. of sight. You have to judge yeah. behind a pillar, is what you mean. That's yeah. LOS. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, everybody's like, Pi is still such a noob. <laughs> no. Don't worry. It's okay. I'm not really proud of my 16 years of well, so That's, no, you win this round. Trust me. <laughs> You're free from the addiction. The All curse. right. We, we've got a couple more questions on uh, Echoes of the Atlas and so see if we can try and cover them. Uh, what do we think of oh, the wait, Atlas? I... Oh, wait, no. Noodle, go. Noodle. Yeah, I, I want to say words too. because You get I'm to say excited. words all the way through it. <laughs> say these words now. <laughs> I will say these words. Uh, so I think actually having an incentive to do bosses because they've been trying to do that before. Metamorph, you're able to get the unique organ if you complete the boss. Uh, I think they pretty recently added where a boss is a guaranteed map drop. I don't think that was enough to actually change people from just clearing a map and actually doing the boss. So I'm excited to do those fights. I think uh, what I would not want to have in my area with Maven, because you can pick the bosses. You just have to select her beacon icon uh, in the map device to say this is one of the bosses that's going to be in the encounter. Uh, I wouldn't want the canyon boss, the chicken and dog. <laughs> that would be terrible to have with other people with the rain of arrows stun. Oh. It would just, that would be so yeah. terrible. I just but I also it thought, the spot. Yeah, you just get stuck, and especially in a 10 encounter, you're going to be in so much trouble. Yeah, it's like, I'll root you into my nice caustic arrow. Enjoy. Yeah, seriously. Yes. Uh, but I thought it was interesting that this also, this expansion seems to be more meta commentary on players, right? With Conquerors of the Atlas, there's all the little jabs from Xana that are like, oh, the Conquerors, you just can't get out of the Atlas. Why do they keep going back? It's like they just want to kill things. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just basically talking smack about you. And in this one, the envoy in the trailer is saying, like, what drives you? It's only power, right? Like, oh, I him. love the scripting Moral. because it really does encapsulate, like, the real world, like, who is playing this game. Yeah, I think it's interesting. So I'm wondering if there's going to be more kind of meta commentary on the community and the player base, uh, because of that little snippet, which I think is very fun, especially for me, like making lore stuff. It's just like, oh, what mm. do they think? Dude, I'm I'm so excited for the lore that is hopefully going to be delivered through this league, like and through this expansion. I, I think that's probably the thing that I'm big biggest excited. Like I just that there's something about what they've created for this and what what we've been able to see in in the video and all of the content that was produced yesterday that just just smacks of like potential and just like the next phase of Path of Exile, like massive growth is what oh. I got from it. And I, do, I don't, I don't want to get on the podium and talk about it. We'll get onto it in a second. Um, so let's talk about Atlas Region Ascendancy League points before we go onto the podium and I talk about the thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> what do you guys think about specking into the leagues? We've got a new passive skill tree. We've got eight new passive skill I, trees. <laughs> what if I told you now this might be a hot take? kind of hate it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
Someone this has another to. Another thing I have to micromanage, and I'm already managing other shit. And now I got ritual shit to manage. And now I'm gonna have to manage my my atlas. And they didn't fix it. It's not like they made it smaller. Like conquerors are gonna like there are less of them or some, you know. So I'm sick of managing my shit. <laughs> okay, I have to say that I agree. <laughs> I, I swear, I think even in the most recent episode I said, I don't think that the current atlas is finished. It's incomplete. And by that, I didn't mean add more shit to it. I said, like, yeah. finish, finish the stuff that you started on, please. <laughs> please. Wait, how about instead of nine maps, we go to seven maps and I don't feel like it's a big fuck you every time I see an, I have to do eight more maps. How about that? <laughs> you know, like. Please, dear God, I'm begging you. I'm, yeah, sorry. That that's that's my like I'm ex I like the idea of it, but I already feel this is why I feel concerned. Because there's stuff on top of stuff. Remember when they said they were going to trim it back? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> They're like we're going to trim it back, guys. We're going to make sure this league just has, you know, it's perfect. It's good. Remember that? You and watch, it's like, you watch Yogi's Atlas trailer, stuff. didn't you? We have ritual you? stuff. We have this stuff. We have heist coming back. We have a harvest coming back. I'm just like, please. You watched Yoji's trailer, didn't you? Uh, who? No. Oh my god, no! Okay, so I feel like it's mandatory viewing, but I don't think we're going to watch it during the podcast. But yeah, Yoji does right. his actual trailers, so he, he sort of breaks down the trailer and then says, like, you know... Oh, I missed it. What it really... Yeah, I it came out, it. like, while I was asleep. And then I, oh, like... Okay, okay. Actually, it was awesome to, like, wake up and then be able to go through Twitter feeds, see the post from Yoji and be like, he posted that an hour before this. Oh man! Oh, I wish I wish I saw it. No, I just I just feel like it's, it's so much stuff. I'm, I'm mildly overwhelmed. I'm concerned that I already feel like I have too much stuff in the game, and now I'm just going to be putting ritual stones with bosses inside my map or inside my my stash forever. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just I'm just a little mildly concerned, but at the same time, I'm excited for it because I like juicy maps. Mm. So, you know, there is that. I like to juice maps. And I like the new watchstones for the juice, but I'm concerned. Um, okay. Let's move back to Noodle for more takes on Ascendancy Leagues and, and watchstones and stuff. I mean, I'm pretty neutral towards it, to be perfectly honest. I think the craftable watchstones are nice, but the fact that it's mm. not your full atlas, it's based on region, I think it's pretty clearly a way to force people to do different maps. And I don't know if they're really going to be able to do that, right? If they have a less desirable region, but ooh, this one has Harvest and Legion and Delve on it. Are we really going to see people doing those maps more? I don't really know. And especially if you have to complete the Maven's boss challenges to get the points to spec in. You know, that's also making people potentially do, I don't know, you have to do a variety of bosses in each region to get that or how exactly that's going to work if you could kind of pick the same few bosses to get points for each challenge. But um, I don't know. I guess I like some of the bonuses, like getting Sulfite for completing a map, even if Nico's not there. That would be cool. I, mm, I like that. Sick. I don't mm. think it's going to be like... I just don't think it's as cool as i thought it was because it's region locked like i don't know if you're gonna get me to do some of the maps that i don't want to do like um, i think we'll really need to wait to block. see how we get those points like the real like what it what is required of the player and also i'm very curious before we move to bk's pov um I'm very curious as to how transparent all of this is going to be. Is there going to be quest tracking that's going to help us understand it? Or are we just going to be like blindly stumbling around in the dark? Because there was no quest Blind. tracking when they did the last Conquerors of the Atlas expansion. Like there was fuck all of quest tra tracking. Like there was no way to know what you were doing. <laughs> it's why it's it didn't blind. feel so tedious. Because you were just like, I don't know. <laughs> what? <Well, laughs> maybe this is the Not way sure. to progress. <laughs> And it was all RNG. Um, okay, so BK, thoughts on Ascendancy League points? I actually think it's fantastic. I'm going to be on the opposite side of the spectrum here, which is good. It's good to have a sort of variance of views. 
I think it's a massive boon to SSF and casuals. If you get over the initial like sort of like what the fuck moment of being overwhelmed with all of this other like additional layer of things of that you have to do, it's really the player agency that people have been asking for for some time. Yes, it means that you can't necessarily stack one type of map, but for everyone who doesn't do that type of content, which is going to be a majority of players anyways, it's a massive boon to accumulating wealth that they didn't have like this access to before. It's free juice, it's free sulfite, it's free legion splinters. Like if you've never unlocked your five-way map device on your own, you're going to get the stones. If you like to delve, you'll be able to delve further than before. You'll be able to generate your own crafts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in SSF, this is massive. This means that people will be able to collect multiple types of legion jewels per league. This means that, you know, the, in addition to scarabs, you're going to be passively regenerating these property or these resources. It means more temples. It means better temples. There's just, there's so much here that if you sort of get over the idea of having to set up one more thing, and we're hoping the system organically goes as you complete watchstones in a particular area, the idea is that as you're getting those watchstones, you can beacon in certain like key bosses. And then as you do the different fights, I think it's three, four, five, six, and ten. Um, that's what's going to be awarding you your region points in that area. And so like this scales too. Not only if if you think about it at the most base level, the the average player that gets to, you know, a certain type of maps and they just elk and go. The people that hate investment, the people that sit there and say, I don't want to buy chisels and sextants and fragments and scarabs and prophecies i don't want to map like that it's boring it's tedious i don't want to spend two days trading for you know like five you know like a day of mapping like sure i could get rich but it's not worth my time and i value my time more than i do trading and this is good because this is extra juice for that and you can you're in charge of it i think you and just sold it goes me. along huh <laughs> Like, and I then was going like, alongside Ooh. of it, it's just, it's cool to you because it works with the favorite system. Like, sure, you're not going to be able to camp on burial chambers the entire time, but you can, there's at least one map in every single region that you like that you can at least run that. And that correlates with the, um, like the favorite system that we have going too. And as you run the other content, it comes back and is involved that way. And then if you are a min maxer, you get to really show off your, your game knowledge here because you'll have these opportunities like where you roll a certain sextant in a certain area you know exactly where it goes and what prophecies scarabs and otherwise to line up with it for maximum result like if you know if you get nemesis currency you're going to pick up that watch stone you're going to go over to the nemesis area you're going to put that bad boy down you're going to roll a beyond map if beyond's on the map device you put that on there too and you go with it you get everything else that you need to like pack size the absolute shit out of that map and go ham and have a lot of fun and so like it scales all the way from the casual player that's like i never get anything anyways wait i'm actually getting something cool i'm like passively generating these things that other people have had that i've never had all the way up to the min maxers that can be use their you know big five head strategies to really just you know pull so much currency out of this I think there yeah, are a I'm lot salty. of casual players that are going to get rolled by the bosses and get frustrated and not level up like they want to. Like, that's I true. think I absolutely... Well, that's the thing is you have to have 10 different bosses to get those last ones, right? Maybe four, three, four, five different bosses but in a certain really... region isn't too hard, but I guess it depends on, like, how high of a tier does it have to be? Is there going it to be It also depends on how many that. of the ascendancy points you want spec If all you like in a certain region is Delve, you know, four four points in. I mean, sure, and yeah, like you can also call the beacon onto a completely wiped map to do that boss encounter if you are afraid of it. You have the decision yeah. to just to control how hard those encounters are, even. Yeah, but there are a lot of people that don't even make it past the axe, and then the people that do make it past the axe get into maps, and they don't make it past white maps, and they don't make it past yellow maps, and then they have to do this atlas stuff on top of it. I feel like this is going to be hard for people who having having so many bosses to fight to get stuff to get juice may be a problem is what I, I can Do we know if the boss tier affects you getting the ascendancy points for Maven? Because 
I have uh, no idea. Uh, no, I don't idea. think we know that yet. That's that's what I would be concerned about. But also, the tin I mean, map I... one is is relegated to only four stone watch li- watch zones only. So it will be a tier fourteen to sixteen areas that you'll generate oh, yeah. those bosses. And the ten person map invitation is tier sixteen only. Yeah. Then there's like there's a lot of people that are locked out of that content. Like but a it, lot like, of people. My counter argument is still that there's. They can still handle like the three and four probably, especially if they put white maps into it to like and not craft that invitation or whatever. And then even if it is like in yellow maps, if you want to do soul fight stuff, you like I think having every single possible ascendancy point in a region is not conducive or not necessary to enjoy this change. I think you can put like two points into a region and still get a ton out of it and as a casual player. Whether it's generating more missions because you just like running the missions or occasionally running into an extra obelisk or something like that like there's still agency even at the most basic level and i don't think that's a bad thing yes it's a lot but this is obviously an in-game tailored to the people that are the backbone of this game the people that they had to win back after heist so i don't i don't begrudge them that either i'm just happy that there's a scale to this and that's if you sort of like take a deep breath and Content creators have a lot of work to do as far as generating these like how to tutorial videos for their different respective communities too. But I I don't know. It's intimidating as hell, but this is not a bad thing and I refuse to believe otherwise. <laughs> I think that's one of those times. I'll have to see what I play it. Right now I feel like I'll make it, but I also feel tedium. And that concerns me. But that's just, you know, that's just my opinion here, right? Like, maybe other people are very excited. I worry about tedium. I, like, my greatest concern with the current, like, system that this is being inserted into in the same way that Elder was inserted into the Shaper system um, is that there are massive stopping points in the progression between different map tiers especially between the watchstones and if the tier of the monster that you're fighting is going to like drastically affect your progression with the maven and the echoes version of progression then you've got not one but two things that you're missing out on it's going to be no different than using um beacons for uh whatever they're called the god stuff. I don't know. I, I You know, pantheon? you do it once. So, yeah, it's going to be no okay. different than a Pantheon. Instead of putting a Pantheon thing into the map device, you're just clicking a button that's already on the map device to say, I want to capture this. Last yeah. league, I didn't do a single Pantheon. Heist, I didn't do any of them. It was just like, I, I have no time for this. I barely have, like, I don't the amount of having to go and grab scarabs and everything else and, like, juice this and juice that. Now I have watchstones to juice and juice and juice. Like, I'm just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot of juice everywhere. You know, yeah. it's very juicy. <laughs> very juicy. I just think for me, it's like, unless there's some reason to do all 10 points for every region because of the differences in each region, that's improbable for me. And so I don't know if there's any other incentive because if an area has like torment and incursion you know i'm less likely to Goodbye. get all the 10 points for that area than somewhere that has like legion and harvest mm-hmm. and, and whatever else and it does to me it does also depend on like the bosses especially for a 10 encounter if there is like an area where i just think this combination of bosses at this high of a level is not going to be something i'm going to be able to do but it does have the things that i want I don't know. It, it should be interesting, but I also think it's going to force a lot of people who don't. Uh, it's going to probably not be very exciting to people who don't like bossing content. Mm. Yeah, and there's some people that like love to map and something that is that is yeah. relatively. It, it's actually pretty like insanely beneficial, especially with some combinations. But is is this a way that's going to feel like content locking to some people? or forcing them to change a play style, which I'm happy with. I like to do bosses, mm-hmm. but I know a lot of people don't. There, Yeah, there are a lot of people that just run maps and never touch the boss and get another map and, you know, do that. But I do think uh, Brittle's absolutely right. SSF, like, it's amazing. It's amazing for that. Uh, and honestly, SSF should have more ways to get things done. 
Yeah, like absolutely. It is the same as trades. So I do think that I can definitely see the benefit for for all the SSF players. It'd be really, really nice. Cause like right now I'm on I'm on trade. I'll just trade a hundred sextants and then I'll juice my maps and go. They can't do that. At least now they got this other way to juice. I yeah, because the, like the previous way of doing it was like just generating a lot of currency and then trying to get your way through it. And if you didn't have the time to invest in currency generation, then you were just kind of like too bad, so sad, man. I'm also perfectly comfortable and okay with there being like in-game content that isn't achievable for me personally. Like I, you know, I don't enjoy going back and 100% awakening bonus my atlas. I think that's a like a layer of extra that's good for certain people, but not something that I feel particularly compelled for. Same like the 100 grind, like you don't need to be level 100 to have access to good power for your build. It's just extra on top and it's a trophy. And I feel the exact same way about this too. Like I think with four to six points in each region, you can reasonably, especially with the regret currency, accommodate what you want to play without having to have all 10 and all 10 reg or in all of the different regions like i just don't think it's necessary i think it's there for the people that want to you know that hit 40 every single league and have all of the awakening completion and all of the pantheon powers unlocked and all of the other stuff too like i feel like it's good that there's stuff like that in the game for those people but i think for this mechanic to be effective it won't require all 10 points and i'm fine with that you know two four i think like i think with normal completion you should expect to have at least four to six points if you are someone who unlocks and waken or eight every single league i think like through that normal progression you'll probably end up with at least four points per region which means that you can specialize into one tree particular so pick which tree you like and have fun but what if the maven battle is locked behind that? Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. I'm point. like, I, what if I want to do, to do this fight. <laughs> well, you'll, like, I, I really mean, as you farm Awakener, you know, as you farm Awakener 8 through normal mapping conditions, you'd be unlocking the extra points anyways, because you'd be doing at that point in time, if you have a specific favorited region, then you would be running some of those content over and over again anyways. And like over time through like just doing the base atlas you encounter more beacons more beacons more fights and then you go to the six and then the seven and then the ten and then you get to boop maven once you get your different invitations be satisfied with this explanation i don't i think it's yep yeah, i go back to my time will tell thing but i really want to fight the maven like the, the actual maven. i want to fight her yeah I want to fight them all. I'm ready. I'm so worried drunk. about that fight, to be honest. <laughs> I really I hope it's no good. good. I really hope it's good. I don't for, want another no, fight. For, for me, the thing no. I'm worried about is that it's a crazy-ass arena. So please, 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 by God, make the spell effects visible. It's like oh, yes. special like, with gold-plated stuff swirling fucking everywhere. Like, just please put some thought... Like, I swear to God, if we get in there and it's all just full of, like some more celestial farts everywhere that we have to, like, try to pay attention celestial to, farts. even though there's, like, celestial farts all over the ground, I'm gonna fucking lose it. Yeah, uh, it's, it's gonna... I hate the matching color schemes with the fights and the arena. It drives me insane. You know the new cloud pet? That's actually what they're gonna cast. It's just a bunch of cloud pets that you can barely see. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Okay. Like, yeah. is that a cloud in the background? I'm dead. <laughs> I really hope it's a good fight. I want to do it so bad. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it is just 10 in one region. That's kind of what I suspect. But I don't know if it's going to be, like, more than that. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get to it. When but... you consider the, like, barrier for entry to do previous fights, it just required, like, four frags. Right? That was it. It was much so it. much better like it sometimes easier. it was only nine maps to get uber elder and then i got i got shaper fragments and then i got El you know it was good it was good <laughs> before now it's like 2500 maps to get one serious and he drops garbage <laughs> it's not even worth it not only does he drop garbage he is garbage let's be real here <laughs> I, had Ooh, I said it Oh yeah, I've had this dude retreat into clouds more than once and just like, I'm not moving from this cloud. I'm like, I see you're bugged then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I waited four minutes while he was in a cloud and I was just like, I'm going to, I wanna... guess I'll just leave then. I guess I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he's still like, hmm. 
Such a shame that. Such a sh real shame that. I think oh. the other thing that's really cool about this new additional layer system before we move on is the implication of the changes. So this is something that's going to be with us moving forward. So not only can we expect the map um, maps to change per region, depending on like what type of league it is, but I, I, I sincerely hope that we can have like the different mods on different regions change too. I would really like to see that. Like I'd like the towers with the yeah. respective like talents to also flip flop around in addition to the maps. I would like to not have to fight three different Dodres. I'm hoping that the 11 new maps that they put in will take out like the three Malakais and the three Dodres and like maybe we can we can take some of those out, right? Cuz I'm already fighting a lot of them in the axe and I'm kind of sick of them. All the ones they showed looked new. But yeah, the there's this one, there's this one like porcupine that looks like Nergigante from Monster Hunter where he like grows horns and then splits them out. It's awesome. Ooh. The only thing that I'm worried about is that, like, I'm like really worried that they're just, like, control, like, C control V from PoE 2, and I don't want boss fights from the new game ruined for me by them being content early. Like, I really hope that it's oh, just, like, yeah. some stupid little creature in some corner somewhere and not, like, some boss that, you know, in the actual story itself. That's the only thing. Like, please don't read yeah, like assets and don't spoil it early. Like, I want every single fight when I play PoE 2 to be a surprise. The, yeah. the the guys that we got to see in the reveal, like, like I'm kind of just like cautiously hoping that we don't see those people already, like the worm and the, um, what's his name with his bell. But I feel like they know that we know those things exist, and they would know if we if they straight like we would know straight away if they copy pasted it. Into... But aren't the harvest mobs mobs from Po too? They're so we already they have. Were... There are character models from shape shifting stuff, is the way I understand it. They have okay. a bank of character yeah. models. So they were that reused they've... assets, but not actual, like, they might be like trash mobs or something like that, or what mm -hmm. you would see as like a rare, but not like a boss encounter or like a unique encounter in a yeah. zone that I'm aware of. Mm. Only off topic, you think Poe 2 will have Calandra? <laughs> <laughs> just, you know. Maybe yeah, Calandra at this is point, the Poe 1 ultimate. I'm just game. excited to hear that there's writing that extends into the future to tie this all together because I, I feel like. Especially, I, I like Conquerors at the Atlas, but it also feels like it was a story delay. And sort it's of like, like it was something that they could insert into the lore that would like make sense because it is completely plausible that, that all of those things would happen. And, but like, you know, it sort of felt like an insert, whereas like it's kind of cool to see like a continuation of the story that was built on before with like Xana and everything else. Like the fact that it's a continuation of the Elder line and not the Cyrus one, I think is a good move overall for lore because the Cyrus, it, it just felt like a pit stop. I, like I don't think there was any way they could have gone with it, really. Never heard of Cyrus in my life until he came around. So, I mean, I never heard of him. <laughs> Conqueror, you say? I'm glad it's someone new. I, not that I, like, I did hope yeah. for the Harbinger thing, but then want want to say that, like, because the, the like, prediction that Noodle came came mm -hmm. out with, with the theory of it being the, el the Elder and that stuff, like, related, um hasn't been confirmed you don't see the like integration between challenge lore challenge league lore and um expansion lore if you know what i mean and so without like i wonder if it's even possible that they would do that like now that i think about it it's really segmented like even siloed the fact that the law like the the oh shit um the law doesn't exist like doesn't overlap until unless they confirm it they, they haven't though so so what i was thinking is how is it possible for like before we knew it was the maven before we knew it was related to elder which is expansion league law is it even possible that they would confirm or do anything with harbinger because that, to this to this day i don't think they've ever base game core overlapped because Challenge League law has always been in addition to. Yeah. I think I said well, that over like a, uh, two minutes when it was probably three sentences. Like it just... <laughs> yeah, it took me a second to put together, but you're saying like League lore and expansion and game lore haven't overlapped. That's um, and wrong now because chat just pointed out synthesis overlapped a lot. 
Oh, I was even going to say that technically, since Harbinger was harbinging the elder, uh, that it's it's a little bit muddied. But since this is a good example of that as well, I would say you know we can't rule out that it's not related to Harbinger. I don't want to rule it out, but like I want to planet see them write it. You know, if it is, but will there's like a planet? It's blue. I- I, I guess I want to kind of believe that they're all different threads to something bigger that's still out there, and we'll sort of learn maybe a little bit more about that with this, I'm hoping. Hmm. Yeah. Like, Harbingers are from out there. You know, Elder is from right. out there. She is from out there. So maybe we learn what is out there. And and it well, needs I'm, to be said that there are more Elder Shars. It's basically confirmed. I'm thinking it's that they're blue planet written, that Kitten pointed exist. out. You pointed out that planet at the end that kind of looks like a cratered moon or something, but it's blue and gray. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that looks interesting. Blue, gray, Elder, Harvey. <laughs> so you're you're getting the tinfoil hat. Great. I'm giving you an honorary it. tinfoil hat. You can join the, yeah, the club. Love it. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see an expansion. Obviously, we can tell from this that uh, the Maven knew of the Elder, but we don't really know... Like, did they all go to school together or like, what, like what's the relationship there, right? Like, were they working together or is it just that eldritch beings who are more otherworldly have knowledge of each other, but their paths didn't really cross? Like, how intertwined are these two characters is what I'm really hoping that we learn more about. Same. Maybe if you're so powerful, you just know of other powerful beings out there. You're like, Very. oh. <laughs> I, My... I can feel their what do they say in anime? <laughs> presence. <laughs> their presence. My, <laughs> My head canon is that like Elder is the equivalent of a little kid that runs around squishing bugs and is very annoying. And then she just she's like, wait, that sound is gone. Where did it go? <laughs> like a buzz, yeah, like a buzzing little, mosquito. Elder is a mosquito. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Where did that little shithead go? Like, damn. He was running around God. like I don't know, spreading his decay or whatever weirdo pushing bugs those were children <laughs> i prefer your head canon to the now referral that she is like she is elder's ex-girlfriend i saw oh i saw elder's elder's ex- mama, and i'm like elder's mama she's what really the- disappointed that you killed her son or trapped him or something <laughs> i would be i so feel like if she I'm was sure. if she was elder's mama like she wouldn't want to mess with us. Like she'd just be like, "Oh, right." We wouldn't be trying to impress her or anything. Like I could. That the thing work. that I go back to you is actually the the thing that I would think would be really cool is if they were almost like siblings in certain ways. Because we have the in Greek mythology, we have Nyx who gives birth to Phobator and Erator or something like that. I can't remember, but there's one that's basically like the the god of kings, and everyone, if you like, pray to him, that you'll be awesome and have like good fortunes and then there's Bobator who is like sort of like the the night I think he's called like literally the night crawler or something where it comes from <laughs> and he's like literally like the bad stuff that you know like he is dread and horror and everything else so like we have that duality maybe I don't know because she she challenges you which is kind of like the call of the I, I wish I could remember the other god I do remember but, yeah, the there's, that the prediction really? I made about the like multiple arms and is that like she Shakti which one did I say it was Shakti or Shiva? I think you said you, both. No, one uh, of them's a dude and has one has ne- a normal number of arms and the other one's oh, a girl. Well, I think she and has the one one <laughs> She's the one I know who is a woman and also has multiple Shiva? arms. Yes. Yeah. So Shiva is the mother and um I was really curious to see if uh, the Maven would resemble this art that we've been given or if the art has any like relevance to that because as soon as you start using like image I- like iconography it's not even imagery it's iconography that builds on existing religions in our in our society um you you already automatically conjure this like understanding within the player who has any understanding mm-hmm. yeah totally yeah you have references and uh associations with that that is you know you're going to bring into what you're seeing in the game yeah uh 
I kind of want to go back to BK mentioning the Maven's challenge. So it's brought up that the elder is gone and they're hearing the silence of the elder and now they come to us to challenge us to see if we're worthy of something that the maven wants i'm assuming i guess we don't really know but what's weird to me and i guess the question that i would pose is why wouldn't she go to the conquerors of the atlas and did she is she testing multiple people like isn't it weird to i mean obviously we're the player so of course we're getting tested yeah. that's mm. how games work but like lore wise why yeah uh because they're trash and we're very good <laughs> We bested them, right? Oh, but they didn't write yeah. that into the law. We're still fucking fighting them. Okay, that makes sense. I yeah. mean, like Noodle's question <laughs> makes sense. Oh, um, yeah, I mean, they yeah. never fought. They never fought Elder, right? Obviously, he was still no, alive. They, we they killed fought him. the Elder, and they trapped him Martin in the Cosmic Arcana. Cirrus and the Elder were trapped inside there, and then the four remaining were just like, "Well, I guess he's gone." And then in, but then why did I have to fight him? Sirius is taking credit Sirius for my work. out of the Cosmic Arcana. Now the Elder's gone, but potentially it was like absorbed into Sirius or Sirius battled him in that timeless glass ball. We don't really know. It was some I feel creepy shit happened, but now they're all, you know, out in a boot and the Elder's gone. <laughs> Sirius is just fronting. All right. He never actually fought him. He, <laughs> he, never <laughs> he, fought him, but he also just pushed him like into the just... trap. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's all I did. He so many not fell interested. In the trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He fell in afterwards. Like, oh, I pushed too far. You know, <laughs> he, just, he fell in with him. Honestly, I just think like we're the ones who dealt with Elder. They know it. They know it. Cirrus, he didn't really do anything that was that relevant. Clearly, <laughs> clearly. I mean, <laughs> should we? Did he chat about mm -hmm. ritual league a bit more sure okay so this was what i took away from ritual league and i'm i really don't know that i understand it that well um we've got ritual circles we've got a shrine or an altar at the center of the circle these are going to occur in areas i'm assuming from like the coast um they resurrect the mobs that we killed in that circle. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we can drag people into it or if it's just the mob. I'm pretty sure we can't, right? Because uh, Chris right, was talking can't. about you can't herd mm -hmm. stuff over there. Um, you, there can be like up to... Like methods, right? I like affect it, but you can't like drag in stuff. Mm. Um, so there can be up to four in an area, though. I assume the four is going to be like mm, tier red maps, I guess um or more around that with an altar yeah the altar can attack you i think it's kind of the boss the problem is you will never be able to shut it down it looked like it didn't have health it has its own powers i think like you kill the waves and then it chills yeah that was you my point though to, like ignore its own powers the altar doesn't have like its own health bar that you can attack i didn't see one but i haven't wa I, I haven't watched the video like Enough. Yeah, I didn't notice that, but I think you're right, Pi. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have its own health bar. It's probably just active while the encounters, until you kill the last mm -hmm. ritual monster. That was my interpretation, too, is that it's, mm -hmm. like, when you activate the encounter, it activates as well. Okay, and there seems and then, to be, like, different types of them. Too. Yes, and po possibly informed by the map, or maybe RNG, or we'll see. Um... If you complete the ritual sacrifice, <laughs> um, <laughs> feeling very occult, um, you get a reward from the altar in it's a tribute of something to do with tributes and favor. Um, you can buy that with points that you generate by finishing this process. Um, or you can defer it for a later time and you can save monsters that you kill, which could be bosses if the ritual uh, circle happens where a boss is, but is not always going to be where a boss is. Am I summing correct? And then you can yeah. like put them in a map with you and then fight them again. 
Yeah. I That's like the, the deferral life. program. Yeah, the deferral is. I'm call I'm calling it lay by. Do you guys have lay by? We call it lay it away. Down, <laughs> down payment lay away here is what we what we'd call it. It's lay away. You pay or you pay a little bit now, and eventually you get the item. <laughs> you know, eventually you're gonna get it. I I like the program, yeah. but I I want to say I don't understand why the price of it is being reduced. Because you're not actually paying it off at, in, in installments. You pay a it, bit of it to you? defer it. Yeah, yeah you, you pay a little bit oh, to defer okay. it. That yeah. makes more mm -hmm. sense. Because mm -hmm. uh, I thought you were just saying, yeah. no, nah, I'll do it later. Like, yeah, later. No, you have, to, you have to put your down payment. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Cool, that mm -hmm. makes sense. All right, then I was a little, I was a little I think, bit stuck. Could you potentially defer it to the next map, Ritual Stone? If you yes, don't. Yes, can go to the next okay, good. map. Okay, I wasn't I have 100%. Yeah, the only question I have is that you can refresh like what's in the shop and I don't know if that affects something that you have on deferral. Right? Cuz it goes through That's to a the good map, question. But if you refresh the whole shop, are you going to get rid of your deferral? That's the one thing that I'm like mm -hmm. Since well, you're does it mean guarantee it's guaranteed, guaranteed to, to be in the next shop as well. It's such a nutty system that they'd put in. Yeah, let's just do get do a deferment in the next map, and then you can get the thing eventually. Like, it's so different. I think different. it's totally the learning from the Harvest League, because instead of just hoarding stuff, you putting it off, which is very, oh, it just very much speaks about the character of who, what a POE player is. <laughs> is <it> procrastinator <laughs> you're just like what well, wait if, like what if a better opportunity comes along <laughs> what I if mean, i want yeah. all the garbage <laughs> i usually do <laughs> i literally played the game yesterday and i picked things up and i'm putting it in my dump tab i'm like it's just gonna go away monday why am i doing this <laughs> Okay, so the question, the first question that I have about this, this like format is what do we think of it? Aside from the layaway thing, we, we come, that you know, everybody's happy about that. Um, I don't really know if we need to talk further about it. So, uh, Noodle, what do you think of this particular format? It's the first time we've had an inanimate object damaging us, like a trap moves and all that stuff. This one is stationary and. Being able well, to attract I us. Think, I mean, I think the us. mechanic of the fight itself is, while it is new, I don't think there's anything too different about it in its essence. Like, there's been other times where there is ground effects during major boss fights. Like, I think of the Katarina fight, right, where you still have things that are, that are hurting you that aren't necessarily uh, anything that you can fight in itself. Um... But I think all of the system around it, like having the tribute shop and then building, especially when you're going to have four rituals, strategically building up. I don't really understand how you can strategize anything if the monsters are predetermined uh, besides, you know, saving one for later uh, in a map. But I think... I mean, I really like the tribute system. I think actually being able to have picked rewards as loot instead of me just scrambling and picking up everything and spending a lot of time doing that is awesome. The fight itself, if you can't kite other monsters into it um, or get rid of any monsters that you don't want to fight that are in there should be interesting. I'm not too worried about the, the shrine's effects itself, although we haven't really seen much more than the what spinning laser example. Which, you know, go in circles every time. Just circles. It's it's going to help. Um, POE is circles, though. For... POE is that post Malone song. It's a post Malone. It's post Malone, right? I don't know. Who is that? Like, <laughs> Oh, God. I made a contemporary reference to people who don't listen to pop music. No, okay. no. I know who he is. He's that dirty hobo looking guy. Post Malone, right? Yeah, he is a little bit. <laughs> All right. Who made that one song about being a rock star or something? And that's all I know. <laughs> okay. Was there a Paramore song called Circles? Okay. Anyway. Um, has anybody got any comments on what Noodle said? 
Uh, PK? As far as... The, I mean, like, I have my take on yeah, yeah. What do you think of the format, or did you have anything to say on? I love the concept of ritual because it's just secretly more bossing wrapped up in a clever way to keep mappers happy as well. I mean, it's effectively yes, more monsters on a map as promised, but they're bringing in a lot of like boss-like scripting. There's like this zoning that occurs with this like synthesis synthesis esque like enclosure of the player into a certain space, followed with like the arena like area of denial that's sort of like brought on by the uh, ritual thing in the center and that the players you know like we're gonna have to like navigate through those two things it's like a small arena there's other things it, it's it's basically a boss encounter that just has like a lot of mobs and like a big ad phase instead of like a one boss that you hit so i like it it's still a challenge um i think it's kind of cool that it combines it's like the first bridge between the two types of content in my mind anyways. Um, okay, I do want to say that I mentioned this is probably the first time we've had an inanimate object attacking us and then people were like, oh, shrines attack us. And I'm like, yeah, but you can run away from them. Like you are locked into this arena after triggering this thing that can is going to attack you. Like shrines are inanimate. That I don't know. I see them kind of like traps, but they enhance the things around them. Whereas... Like, you are walking into a situation where you're basically t saying, yes, hurt me, and then you can't run away. We don't know if we can't run away yet, and I severely hope that we can. Like, <laughs> I feel like this is the one part of the league design that we haven't seen yet, mm. or maybe I lost. Um, or I didn't, I missed, rather, not I lost. Uh, wrong word there, and grabbed the wrong word out of my head. Um, I. That's really the only thing I'm worried about is like, at what point do we have the ability to end the ritual when we're in trouble? And like, I really hope it's not another button <laughs> because like I already mashed the wrong one when I'm in a blight encounter. Oh, with it's going to be V. On, that if it's there's like be Illyrium blight ritual buttons, I have, I'm not going to be able to do it. Like there's just too many buttons at that point in time. And I guess you could put like them on separate key binds, but then remembering which one in panic is hard. Or if you're even looking for the button, you're taking your eyes away from the thing that's imminently killing you to look in the bottom right to figure out which color button to press. And then you die. And so I'm really hoping that it's just like synthesis where you just run into the zone and then it kicks you out or ends the ritual or something like that. That like there's this arena where it like closes you in, but you can kind of like, you know, belly flop into the darkness to end it yeah. just so that it like stops. You just like run into the void and it's like, yeah. Thematically, yeah, because the only thing that makes if sense because if you're, they're locking you into this sort of like zoning area, then leaving it is the the right call there design wise. Because like in Delirium, you were always in the Delirium. The Delirium like surrounded you. And if you ran away from it, you would just run into more Delirium. Here we have a clear border that you can retreat to. We'll find out. What if you accidentally put your foot over the edge and then it ends the. Well, synthesis Ritual. had a, a lead way too. You remember it would like kind of stick you a little bit, but then if you went into it for a certain amount of time or a certain distance into the goop itself, it would it would spit you out. So like if you really? put your toe into it, you'd be like, ah, oh, gross! I got slowed for half but a second. But if like you forward. flame dash directly into it, it would kick you out. I'm I'm worried it'll be like a serious thing because sometimes I like he's right at the edge and then I go around him, but then I touch the little edge outside of a circle and he's like, oh, clouding. You know, like he just gets immediately mad, and I just don't want to uh, wreck my ritual that way just because I stepped like a teeny tiny little foot, a little tiny little nothing out of the I hope of the... so too. I hope there's a leeway to it because I felt like Tithis yeah. had that sort of boundary that was forgiving in mm -hmm. that manner. I mean, it was annoying because it came with a slow, which just puts you in more danger. Mm -hmm. But at least, mm -hmm. like, if once you went beyond a certain spot, even if it was like you put your toe like... out of it for a second, you could get back in. Mm -hmm. if it's a just that definitive of a border the way it is with like because i've done that too where i'm like really like i barely dashed out of it yeah. no <laughs> yeah no yeah no because you're at the stairs and i'm gonna wait for you to wheelchair all the way around the arena oh, so to fight you in the top terrible. right court. like you know like yeah i get it i it's get it i don't terrible. want it to be that boundary either. Just I, yeah wheelchair? please don't be like that close but yeah if it if it's like a clear okay i dashed out of this purposely like end it and, yeah. and this, to it. me it's the only thing that makes sense because like at least you have mm -hmm. like an area to retreat to 
Now, just like the, I guess the other point of it would be like, okay, well, if you flame dash out of it and you flame dash to where mobs were waiting before the ritual began, I guess they could turn around and smack you in the face. I don't know. <laughs> Do you then get like a grace period for like two seconds after it ends? I don't know. Ooh, I don't know how much we can speculate here without like seeing I just hope gameplay. that they thought about it. I guess at the end of the story is like as far as designing it, there's a lot I could say more about it that I feel like we can pass the torch back around. That's just like my main big concern right now. Love everything else about it, but worried about how to make it end. Uh, Val, what do you think of the format? I like it. I basically voiced some of my concerns earlier. I'm I'm a little worried about um so I my first comment when I saw these guys Russian is I'm like, what is this, Hades? Like, am I just fighting a bunch of mobs and then at the end gonna fight a boss? <laughs> like, is that what's happening here? But at the same time, that's really fun. So <laughs> it's not bad at all. It's really fun, right? It's really good. I am a little concerned about um, yeah, the arena. And I swear in the video. It looked like the pylon was being hindered by some things, like some um, environment around it. And I'm a little concerned that if a pylon, like, I've had blights land inside a statue and I could never finish them. So I'm worried that I could have issues like that with pylons and terrain colli collisions, etc. But I'm generally really... I as long as I don't get trapped in the arena and it's also not finicky, like I touched a little bit, now it's over. I'm, I'm pretty, I look forward to this. I like the waves, like let's fight them, let's do it. I'm pretty beefy, let's go. <laughs> let's, mm. And if I'm not beefy, I like to think I am. <laughs> I like to, <laughs> let's try it, right? It sounds fun. It sounds, it sounds pretty good. It, it looks like the most really engaging to me. It's something I'd like to do along with my maps for sure. Okay. And it's more loot, more mobs. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no argument here. Okay, what do you guys think of the new base types? There's a big reward drawback and stuff. On like the new base types have, you know, great reward and great drawbacks. Now we're kind of returning to some old design ethos. Did. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm really, really excited and happy with the items having like power and then a downside too um it's sort of in you know this is similar to the concept around like existing uniques and it's sort of a good divergence from the influence meta crafting which has just basically become shoving a dead eye and assassin into a pair of boots and putting them on <laughs> um they add a ton of power but there's like a key workaround and i think having to accommodate that power increase is good for the overall health of the game because it keeps divine like build design fresh and like more involved because not only are you then like trying to figure out in your build like your key defensive layers and all these other sorts of things like to reach respective like levels of power then you've got some of these other things to figure out too and it might be something that maybe it changes your ascendancy choice or maybe it changes the way that you build your defenses i think it's really cool i love that helmet that's like increased ford effect but you get crushed and i'm like crush sounds rough <laughs> It sounds yeah, real crushed. They've added so no many armor. new things. Oh, it's no armor. No armor. Yeah, yeah. Which is actually really scary. It's it's actually kind of terrifying to be crushed like that. But like, could I just stack insane fort effect then? Because there are already other ways to stack fort effect. So what if I'm like, yeah, I get crushed, but look at all my fort effect. Do I really get crushed? You know, <laughs> like I don't think so. I think it's really interesting. That and those boots that are absolutely disgusting, and I don't even want to look at them, but they have like they have one to five lightning damage per additional or per 200 accuracy, and then like I don't know, some accuracy downside, but it doesn't really matter because I'm just thinking about their rework to lightning strike and how much I like them. That's basically it. Mm. I'm I'm I I think they're very very neat. I think there are a few ways to work around some of these uh downsides that are fine and I really the one thing that I saw the mana one that was like 30% less mana but then you have a chance to gain back the mana that your skill costs. That mm -hmm. one like that's the only meh one to me, but I don't play a lot of mana builds like that go heavy on that side. So 
to mana people, they might be pogging out. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they're losing their minds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree a lot with BK. I think as somebody who likes to make builds, it just had my mind reeling with all the interesting ways you're going to have to figure out mitigation to get the full effect of those benefits. Um, and how I, I'm interested to see, I think there's probably going to be more base types. We saw what the helm boots, and then I think the other one was the mana was gloves. So, mm. you know, how many different base types are there going to be? Is it every weapon type? Is it chest pieces as well? Like I'm really excited to see all of the different ones. And I think it's going to have this level of freshness and challenge with potentially great benefits, but not as um, obvious as, oh, okay, well, I'm stacking this type of damage and this type of defenses. You have to have more integrations and, and force you to kind of think of uh, ways you can, can uh, maybe use items you hadn't thought would be useful before, right? Like this could make uh, other less uh, desirable uniques or whatever. Like, oh, all of a sudden that uh, particular benefit is really relevant. I'm, I'm really excited to see all of them. I think it's pretty cool. More, more exciting to me than the experimental base types. There's just <laughs> so, so much possibility. Um, okay, I just wanted, I wanted to ask you guys, because uh, this came up in the bay class yesterday. What previous leagues does this league remind you of? Does everybody, is everybody in agreement of the leagues or... Yeah, so let let's just go, um, jump in if it reminds you of any. Wait, what league does this league remind me of? Or like it's it could be like such a clever mix of the best highlights of so many. Like there's like six leagues. It is. Mm. Fair like, enough. It's to me, it's breach and domination or domination with like highlighting the sort of like downsides of each of them. Because, like, with Breach, the density isn't consistent and the area is huge. And in Domination, you just kill the monsters and they're gone. And so, like, there's it it has a smaller area and then, it you know, there's lingering monsters. Like, there's more reason. There's more, com like, you stay longer. It's similar to Blight in the fact that it pins you to an area for an amount of time. But they, like, sort of learn with Blight Encounters that if you pin somebody to a map for four to five minutes, they get really bored and start skipping it. So they've sort of like stretched this out over the course of the map. Maybe it's still four to five minutes, but it's in like, you know, two, three, four different encounters, which is a lot more digestible for people that like to zoom. And I think that it's really good too because it's it they've sort of put the challenge into the arena itself versus Blight where you had that UI to manage and the turrets and all that other kind of stuff. So it's definitely like an improvement in Blight in that way. And then it's sort of like, to me, the reward system is like Parandus and Betrayal mixed together because it's like Parandus and then Tiny's Trials in a certain way. Mm, it reminded where, like, me of Tiny's Trials There's interactive sure. options for like the rewards you get. The rewards are varied. And then like there's also, you know, the different options between saving them for later or rerolling them entirely. I feel like it's like a good... To me, this just proves that they are consistently listening to feedback and implementing it in a manner that's like congruent with their own design philosophy. Like, I feel like they, when I saw this league, I feel like they've heard us, but I feel like they haven't lost themselves either. Feel it's like abyss, but upstairs, and you don't have to worry about chasing down a thing. You know, there's a pylon, you don't kill it this time, you kill all the stuff around it, and you get some loot. Except it's not always a belt, <laughs> you know? It's like mm. something else. But that's that's what I feel. I feel like it's kind of like Abyss if all the if all the bosses or all the mobs just went into a circle. <laughs> essentially. Mm -hmm. And it's it, I, I I like it. But it, it's a looting system is not quite like anything I could because there's I mean, what betrayal in the fact that I get to pick something from a chest in that way would be the closest thing, but it's still not quite, it's so different, mainly because of deferment. It's kind of blowing my mind. I saw those four exalts in there. I'm like, could you just imagine just seeing like, 
<laughs> you know, like fork salt in there to lose my mind. The the screenshot on the main website that has like the preview of that too is really funny too, because the person has like this mishmash of like completely unrelated skills and it's just like one of those terrible characters but then there's like at like, headhunter and like four exalts in the in the window and you're like wait what like this is obviously just bait i can't wait yeah. to see the screenshots of people who couldn't afford headhunters though mm -hmm. i'm a little like, <laughs> like excited for that mold yeah so I it's a yeah it's a three link freezing pulse with a with carrying golems <laughs> yes Oh, yeah, notice the goal <laughs> and like two abilities on the bar that I've never seen, but two dashes just because. Nice. Of course, you need the second dash in case the first one fails, <laughs> or you press the wrong button. If you're like me and you're like, I'm gonna lift my hand for one second and then put it back on the keyboard. Why am I pressing all of the wrong skills now? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh my god. Tiny digression. But you know how on most keyboards it's a F and J that have the little tab on them so that you know where your hand's resting? It would be really yeah. nice. I don't know if this exists, but if they had like a WASD, like so that the W always had a tab on it. So I'd be like, yeah, I know I've got my hand on W. Oh, that's a real gamer keyboard right there. That it's, not even, it's just a keycap, just that one keycap. Maybe I should make one. I can anyway. tell you that my Q... W A S D E completely rubbed off. <laughs> That's how I know what they are. You might need some new keycaps. They're gone, man. I can't see. Maybe the A still has a, a semblance of an A, but everything else is just gone. <laughs> I just gotta hope it's right. <laughs> I think it's probably right, though, if you, you put your fingers down and it's smooth as fuck compared to everything it's else. It's very smooth. It's actually really quite smooth. <laughs> okay. All right, done with the digression. Uh, do we have any closing observations on Ritual League that I didn't cover before we move on to the next topic? Uh, can you see yourself enjoying this gameplay? I feel like we already covered that, right? Oh, yeah. I think, I think I'm going to yeah. really like it. I'm very excited. I, I'm I, ready to kill a lot of things. I don't, I, I want to say it now because I don't really comment that much on it. I just tried to summarize my understanding and I'm really not sure what I think of it yet. But I, I don't know why, but I felt like this was going to slow me down. Like the feeling of having to interact with it. It, it, sh it, it will because you're going to stop. You're going to spend time there. You're going to have to kill off waves of mobs. Then you're going to have to look at all this stuff in there. It's going to make your mapping go a lot longer like it's going to take longer especially if you're not one of those speedy look like some people just take like half a second to look and then they're gone and i'm like how do you do this do I'm you remember so i gotta look <laughs> do you remember the, the i know this was this is different but do you remember disappearing into the garden and then come like emerging in a daze after a while like yes and then this but with where am four I? ritual circles in the same map yep yep it's I well the garden's not going to be so bad now right it's mm. not going to be as time consuming but the ritual... such a shot color on the garden <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I I feel like especially if you had a garden in a Xana map and then you left that and then you left the Xana map and you're like I don't know what's happening what like where, who am I I swear I left a girl and I came out a woman <laughs> like what even happened in there you know <laughs> like years years went by. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Decision paralysis, just, man. Like, yeah, like an eternity. <laughs> just pass by, you know? <laughs> it's what I, that's all. Like, it's just, it was so much. So, uh, yeah, I, I feel like this isn't going to take as much time, but it's <laughs> going to take a while still. Because there are three per map, right? Like two or three per map or something. So, or, or up, like, there are a lot. There's up to there are four. a lot. Yeah, we got up to four. That's a lot to that. And we're gonna it, be looking. Once you do the first one, then you go to the second one, and it has all the monsters from the first one and these new monsters from the second. And then you go to the third. So yeah, it's like it's gonna be longer each time too. And mm -hmm. then you're gonna be like, how many have I done? Where <laughs> am I? Yep. Okay. Yep. So that that was my concern. Um, the next topic. I have prepared a very lovely scene to talk about. Um, 
is the Ascendancy rework. And we have actually quite a few to go through. So there's like a link in the um, topic list. And I'm just going to go through, oops, not in that order, um, from the start. So we have Deadeye. <laughs> um, we, I, and to introduce this topic, um, we were hoping for like Ascendancy reworks for a while because they mix up the meta so much. And this, this, um, this expansion is introducing like a rework for literally every single Ascendancy. So that's like a lot of work plus um, some major reworks to Dead Eye, Elementalist, and a few others. Uh, let's just have a little bit of a discussion about Dead Eye. Uh, does anybody have any like hot takes on this? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Three Mirage Archers that aren't just getting a piggyback ride from you? Are you kidding me? Listen, I would like to see three Mirage Archers on each side of my, like, two shoulders, one in the middle, let's go. <laughs> like, there's, like, what was it, the ski shows that they used to do in, like, the 80s and 90s yeah, with, like, yeah. them stacked on you and you're all holding arms yes, exactly. and you're just <laughs> soaring like, through maps like that. Projectiles everywhere, Archer. fireworks, explosions. The crowd yeah. goes wild. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The <laughs> ranger changes so bad. Like, BK, you were yeah. saying bow league, actual bow league. Yeah. 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 I, I think the Dead Eye stuff is pretty darn cool. Mm. Mm. And having I, um, endless munitions, the plus two um, to projectiles or arrows, I forget what the wording is. Um, Skills fire two additional projects. Yeah. I mean, like, That's her crazy. unfortunate fate for the last, like, I would say almost a year and a half to two years has been basically either being shoved into boots or mm -hmm. a glorified headhunter holder. So it's kind of really nice to see her return as a projectile specialist. I don't really know what else to call it than that because, like, mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily cater to spell or attack projectiles. Like, this is open ended enough that you can play with the behaviors of both types of projectiles. And it's also neat to kind of see some new nodes that affect both two, like, you know, some of the behavior changes with the ricochet. And then, like, Gale Force is finally, like, a nice little defensive layer for her, too, that sort of already, like, plays along with her usual defenses, which right now is, like, Acro, Phase Acro, Wind Dancer, maybe Kintsugi, depending on if you're running Queen or not. So, like, There's I like one it. Thing. There's one thing. Mm -hmm. I don't think focal points is ever going to get used. I feel like focal points, the one with the effect of your marks, at like, nah, I mean, listen, nah. listen. Yeah, that's, dude, there's that's too many not. good ascends there. I can't take that one. <laughs> okay, the, only, that one. the only thing I could see that like maybe being uh, situationally used for would be with certain single target things that like maybe you can't necessarily like link swap. Like maybe you don't have two, two six lanes where you do like eye shot and then like barrage for a single target or something like that. But mm -hmm. maybe you swap like run a different type of projectile ability where you like swap into conch effect, but then like up your curse too. And like maybe those things together are enough to actually do boss damage, you know? That's like the yeah. only time I could see it being used is like to yeah. kind of like get over the fact of needing two six links on most sort of projectile builds or at least a couple every of gym swaps. Everything else on here sounds amazing. I love Shane. I love it. I haven't this played with it in a very wall. long time. Off the wall. Oh, I have a new the... thing for DOE 2 as well, right? Where you're mm -hmm. having like the environmental interactions. So I feel like we're seeing a lot of little hints or pieces of at least uh, mechanics from POE 2. Yeah. I can't I, wait to see what it looks 100 like. 100% reminded of that. Awesome. But... Okay. So... Will you guys try to play with this ascendancy? I'm I'm feeling yes for me. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. I've, there will definitely be a dead eye in my future. Eight thousand builds in mind, and at least ten of them have to have her in it. <laughs> like at least. <laughs> yes. There's just so many possibilities. Ten you, gale girl, force. we're gonna go places. <laughs> mm. Ten gale force will give you twenty percent increased effective tailwind. So you're just gonna be hammering those bosses down. It'll be, be like so a Gatling bad. gun at the end yeah, of it, especially. Oh yeah, the Mox thing, the the integration between and the interaction between Mox and how you can use it with this build. Ooh, I want to do so many things. Okay, let's before we spend too much time on it, let's go to Elementalist. I've got to say, you know, we've kind of been 
shitting on this ascendancy for a while now, so it is really nice to see some attention on her. Um, that that's my hot take. Also, uh, I, I'm very excited for Anki and the arc, Anki's arc witch. <laughs> I am losing my mind over Shaper of Storms. The your hits always shock. Like I'm actually just. Po I've been pogging out about it since I heard about it. I've just been thinking, my hits always shock. They always shock. You know how much damage shock does? <sighs> like, no just more so Skinner bots. Yes. Wow. Yeah, like, I'm so hype about it. And I think that she kind of died. First of all, whoa, her face is a lot. I'm looking over there, and she's just really evil looking. But second of all, <laughs> whoa. Um, I, I feel like she... Ever since Delve, they nerfed her bad, right? They took away her beacon of ruin. They nerfed her. It was terrible. They done her wrong. My poor girl. Yeah, they did her so wrong. But now I feel like she could really have some glory. Like she, wow, mastermind of Discord. Like whoa. <laughs> Shapers yeah, first. I mean, aside from Golemancer, we haven't really. It hasn't been an ascendancy that anyone has really taken seriously. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in general about the, like the implications of this uh, ascendancy change for racing because of my involvement on that side. But even beyond that, it's like really nice to see that she has an actual defensive layer beyond like just take all five golems forehead. <laughs> and then like I'm the heart of destruction is just a really really good node. Like I like the emergence recently in some ascendancies like we have assassin and now elementalists that have this sort of like node that has the intuitive behavior based on what you're doing so like it's this if you're bossing or this if you're mapping and i think that's really really strong especially as they continue to sort of like pile in the different types of content whether it's like these sort of leagues that have like trickling of bossing through it or what have you like i think adaptable behaviors are something that you don't have to account for as a player like it maybe it's one less gem swap or something else like i think it's really good and i'd like to see more nodes like this oh that yep um noodle did you have something to say <clears throat> i am very excited i think uh elementalist got a little bit of uh, the scion situation right where it was kind of a jack of all trades if you take one node you know you get the shocking ignite and chilling conflux and you know you don't need all of that you kind of want to have one maybe two of those and the alternating between area of effect and increased damage i think it was before it's just again like it's a weird it was a weird gamble like there were some elements that were Maybe a, one node was better than another ascendancy, but it almost felt like unless you're doing Golemancer, most of the time you're going to find a different ascendancy that's going to be better even for your elemental damage. And I love doing elemental range damage. Like, I'm, I like spells. That's what I like to do, especially lightning damage, mm -hmm. but cold damage as well. And like cold damage, you're probably going to go occultist. Lightning damage, you might go assassin. And so mm -hmm. it's so exciting to see this. I think... All of the changes are really cool. I like that they're adding, as BK said, there's sort of these unique, um, so here it's convergence, right? And we're seeing Gale Force on the Dead Eye. There's these statuses, I guess. I don't really know what to call them, but that are being added for ascendancies that are more explicitly unique and powerful for a very particular set of skills. <laughs> I mean, the, even it's like so sh Shaper of Winter, now I'm not looking at a cultist the same way. Now I'm like, maybe I do take an elementalist as cold and maybe I, my chills do reduce their action speed by up to 40%. And then maybe Delve gets rid of reducing action speed and I forget and I die. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, we had no idea. Um, I'm, I have to say, like, it has bothered me from a, like, thematic construct that the elementalist sucked at elements and that elemental-based <laughs> play was just shit in the game. So, like, staking... I feel like elemental is the first one that um, Chris mentioned in the video, uh, even though the mm -hmm. order of this list is different. And it needed that because the elemental play in the game has just been lacking. It's been elemental dot through other character types more mm -hmm. so than anything else or yeah. through crit and assassin 
And it's just, a, it's a relief to see this because it just seems like a quarter of play style. Honestly, it should be like mm. like a 25% importance because when you think about like how damage is done in this game, you know, there's, there's fizz, there's your three elements and then there's chaos and then sort of poison factors into that. Like if the three major damage types just aren't rep- like accurately represented on their own, it just mm-hmm. it just seemed like a massive shortcoming. I totally yeah. agree. The I think it's really funny that you count like because I mean elemental hit based damage died when they increased boss health and gave them more resistances because not every single mm-hmm. ascendancy has access to shred, and the way like certain other ones do, but they like quietly snuck some shred into the elementalist tree as well because they they need to if they want to bring it back as something that's actually like doable without crazy investment or otherwise like they are gonna have to kind of want like more boss life sure but like resistance is just basically poops on your damage when you increase that so Mm. either give everyone like better access to red shred in general or pen or you know it's just it's gonna be necessary and i'm just looking through it now and wasn't the like she sucked it like being non-squishy too and then yep did they, yep. golems are not a defensive layer because golems are either out of range of what you're doing, so you're not getting the buff from them, or they're dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and now you're not going to be regenerating life or taking less physical damage if they're dead. And they took away her warlord mark leech when they did made it with hits, and I know you can get it back on a cluster, but you know, not everybody wants that cluster jewel. You know, <laughs> not everybody. <sighs> okay, so we like we like this let's move on yeah this is this is very exciting the elementalist like do i have time for everything i want to do this week so many <laughs> things it is yeah right it is a build creator's dream right now mm-hmm. and it's not it's barely getting started we haven't even seen the gems yet no no we've no, just seen a couple of ascendancies <laughs> or yeah all the ascendancies have been reworked i have like at least four builds i'm gonna have to look at and be like please don't please leave it alone Please, <laughs> please don't hurt it too much. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Let's let's chat about Inquisitor because that one seemed to be a hot topic. Inquisitors, holy snap! Battle Mage, excuse me. What does that even mean? Spell Hello. Bonk. It's like I yeah spell bonk. So it's like it, it's nuts. Gain added spell damage equal to the damage of my main hand weapon. So does that mean I can make like a 600 P DPS weapon? Yes. And then I'll have 600 spell damage. Spell bonk. Uh, so is this perfect yeah. for cock? This is a cock. This is, this is cock. And cast one channel. Quack. <laughs> I don't know. Quack. I say that one. <laughs> Quack. 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 <laughs> It's Quokka. Quok. What you know about you guys know about Quokkas, right? Uh, okay. What? Um, I will. I'll pop a link. But Quokkas are a really, really adorable looking uh, Australian native animal. They're like the friendliest animal in Australia. And they're all happy the all the time. I don't know how they survive there with everything so mean, but they're just there being cute. Okay. Like. <laughs> anyway, back to Inquisitor. So yeah. Spellbunk. Um, did yeah. you have anything else you wanted to say, Val, or should we uh, chat? Oh, with- oh, I'm just, I'm just absolutely like, so I can only think of a couple odd builds for for Battle Mage, but I just love the idea of it. Maybe my, maybe my brain isn't isn't fully uh, exploring all the possibilities. And then, and then they did this one percent increased critical strike chance per point yeah. of strength and int, whichever is lower. And I'm like, I can boost up a lot of strength, like a lot. Right or yeah. and and still make it the lower one and make that huge and I love attribute stacking because like every point is good, right? Every point you put in, you're like ten strength. Hey, <laughs> you know, right? Even very travel exciting. names feel good. Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. So I'm just like, wow. Like I don't know. This is the one I feel the most gray area about because I'm still, I. Which way is he? Go- which way am I going to take him? I don't know. I just lo- I'm really really into it. I think it's very cool, very different. It opens the meta yeah. up. I'm very excited about this. Mm-hmm. 
I you really look like, like how they just oh, took the old node for instruments of zeal and just like went with it as an entire like archetype for doing damage like the mm. the like crossover between attack and cast speed or attacks and spells in general like i just think it's neat it's kind of like a new arc mage i just think it's going to take a little while for everyone to figure it out yeah yeah this one's a little less uh on the surface you know oh this inspires me to do this specific skill or this specific build this one i feel like will take a little bit of unpacking and again it has fanaticism introducing this new ascendancy specific status i which, fucking uh, love the thematic of idea are... of fanaticism oh. <laughs> i don't know why it just works because like templar yeah anyway yeah <laughs> yeah it makes sense it's about time <laughs> for him he deserved it I mean, um, honestly, look at his ascents. He's only mediocre, but now, now you're like, damn, damn, he's he's looking mighty interesting. I mean, he was mediocre unless you were like an aura stacker, you know, <laughs> or like I guess maybe a high row, but I don't really see a lot of high rows around. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Everybody's an assassin lately. I mm. feel <laughs> lots of assassins. Okay. Let's go to a cultist. I actually haven't even looked at this myself. Yeah, I didn't look at this one. Okay. Wow, you guys, just ignoring the poor cultist, not looking at her and what I'm she does. Sure Me too, though. Also, I did not look either. <laughs> Wait, BK, have you looked? Tell us someone. I think it's pretty. I I yes. I like the changes to a cultist because it frees her up from being only a damage over time specialist and sort of brings yeah. her back into all types of cold damage or all types of chaos damage um mm -hmm. so like you know if you for some reason wanted to go like dark pack to cultist versus so like a hit based chaos spell versus you know just the usual chaos same over time same with like hit cold spells etc it's really nice that they have unhinged the um was it uh vile bastion from the pops so like or malediction mm -hmm. from the pops or something like that so you don't have to invest all four points into it you can get oh. the you can get the curse stuff without having to like fully invest now, which oh, is really crazy. nice too. Yeah, I see that. So you, like, so you can actually go all the way down your respective whatever tree, grab your sun immunity, and then go for that. And then I think her her power charge stuff is a little bit stronger than usual too. So that sort of buffs the hit side base of it. So basically, the, her her toolkit is essentially the same. Um, I think her region stacks a little bit faster. I think it went back up to 2% per, but it's still capped at 10. So like as you're clearing, you'll hit that 10% region more consistently. But I think overall, they've sort of opened her up the way Trickster is also opened up to where it can also be a hit-based like ascendancy. They've done the same for occultists, and I think it's a good yeah. thing. Because they've yeah. sort of like free her, freed her now to be a little bit more dynamic. This is good. Yeah, I did notice that she stopped being such a dot specialist, and I did I appreciated that. Still more cold yeah, chaos, it's, but and it's they're not insignificant multis. It's more. It's fifteen percent mm -hmm. more on both of more. them, which is you yeah, know, that's big. Um, the more multiplier so, is huge. Mm -hmm. So I just I don't know. I would have liked to see like maybe some personality sort of infused back into her because like right now she's got like stun immunity some like damage types that she does and then like curse stuff and pops i just i don't know like the way that there's some identity with some of these other ascendancies that they have like this one thing that they do exceedingly well she is a master of many or like she does everything pretty good but a master of nothing really yeah. mm. <laughs> wow. like because you know I, I don't know, like, I feel like even still after these changes, you could very much argue the differences and the nuances between Trickster and Occultist, and maybe mm. it comes down to, like, what type of damage you're doing or what league you're playing in or what your budget is, but, like, I kind of wish that the way Trickster has, like, ghost shrouds, I kind of wish there was something very special about her, too, because you mm -hmm. can get, you know, they've just the way that the same way the dead eye got shoved into a pair of boots i think there's like malediction gloves out there and then her other key mechanic that made her special which is wicked ward is on the passive tree so they've like stripped these parts away from her and i really think she deserves something back so maybe hopefully in the future they give her another look yeah the wicked ward thing i know i feel like it's not yet occultist isn't finished no 
but she looks she's looking a lot better now that's that's for sure yeah like this is 100 percent like a huge step like mm -hmm. there's a lot of good numbers it's like her but extra now so it's it's good okay the last one that we have is slayer i'm excited i love slayer it used to be my favorite ascendancy of all time i played and then i think it was my boy. first one that i got like into maps and stuff he's just the best and now his brutal fervor is going to be easy early so that i don't have to wear those offering to the serpent to basically get brutal fervor because you never go up the other side of the crab arm like you can't go all the way up there there's too many other uh, good ascends so you just leave it and then get sad that you don't have the overleach but now yeah. Maybe the wretch well, is the wretch, right? That belt, maybe that will come back into play now. <laughs> maybe, like, I don't know. I'm just thinking, I really, I really, I'm a fan of Slayers. I love the uh, the extra frenzy charge that you get with your maximum endurance charges equal to your maximum frenzies. Yeah, really I really yeah. get that node. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's looking, it's looking mighty nice it's a lot I, better I, than just duration i think that's what it was before mm -hmm. is that like you get increased duration on your endurance and frenzies so having just plus one to max frenzies as well as like that's nice that's great the <laughs> switching around of the two the leech things like i've seen mm -hmm. a couple of different reactions to that what do you guys think of that i think it's significant because you're basically reopening access to one of the like slayers like main archetypes but then also yeah. their most important defensive layer like the yeah. fact that their most defensive important defensive layer and what was so iconic for them was locked behind four was ridiculous mm -hmm. it was absurd and nobody wanted to go that way that's why we just kept our shit slayers <laughs> they're just bad and we're like this is fine though <laughs> or you know you we know just replace this... Slayer for a bit I used to go full crab arms, like both sides, because it looks like a crab, right? Like each side yeah. looks like a crab. It's got a crab. All <laughs> right. So I used to go full crab, like back, back in the day. And then they did the rework and it just wasn't worth it anymore to do it. But now it's like, man, that just frees up so, so much for me. I don't need necessarily endless hunger over, uh, that's the one, right? With the bleed over uh, brutal fur. I'll probably get it anyway. But, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. It's, it's, they said he, he was a minimum, minimal rework and his rework looks good. So I'm really interested, like, what's the Ascendant going to look like? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Scion rework. Very mm -hmm. curious. Because if they're reworking all of them, then she's going to get a rework of. I'm and nervous. Of, I don't even rework. know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I I'm, I'm so proud of the darkness fiber. I swear to God, if it gets unhinged, I'm gonna have to lay down on the floor and stare at the ceiling. <laughs> Try not to character. cry. Yeah, cry exactly. <laughs> cry forever. Don't make PK cry, GGG. No, <laughs> please, just just be. I think if anything, she's gonna get significantly buff. I feel like all if they're if they're working. Okay, maybe they're gonna nerf the assassin a bit. Maybe maybe they're gonna nerf. Necros a bit, perhaps a little. Maybe not though. They seem kind of fine with where they are. They're doing like the criticism sandwich because they're giving us so this now, and then they're gonna slide the nurse in and then like follow it up with something good and hype and just kind of you know pack it in there. I, I think so I think the fact that my three favorite ascendancies haven't been announced yet is me like mentally shitting my pants. I love <laughs> Necro, I love Assassin, I love Trickster. What are you doing to them? <laughs> Just oh. let me know. I want to know. I need to emotionally Longer prepare. <laughs> yeah. I'm just mentally just nothing but just like. Um, the the topic of Ascendant. Um, I, I just I'm skeptical because, you know, Chris is very, 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 very repetitive with the idea that like what he hadn't revealed was probably numerical changes. That's it. Mm -hmm. That was what I got from the announcements the yesterday. Numbers can go down. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm saying, like, is 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 that good for the ascendant? Like, is numerical changes all that it needs? I don't know if it really. Like, I feel like it needs a bit more than that. 
it it's kind of cool too because right now because she's been largely untouched is that she still has a lot of these like legacy effects of like the ascendancy has moved away from certain things but she retains them like the hyro plus one totem is still there so there's like certain things that she can do that used to be popular but now she can still kind of have that corner of the market on so okay, like well let's not talk about like this a... much more before they change it <laughs> yeah I, I just don't know I'd like to see her updated because I feel like there's a lot of really cool combination builds that could be done if things were updated to match the ascendancies a little bit better as they currently are. But then saying goodbye to some of the old archetypes is kind of a eh too. So I hope it's worth it. I, I mean, know I be... they'll never do this, but I really want them to just let me pick like Ranger Deadeye and then like, you know, Ranger Pathfinder. <laughs> just let me have them both. I want them both. <laughs> <laughs> so like don't even go up the side just pick me i don't want to go up i just no, take I all of this please thank you yeah can i just be two different ascends like together but like the same character but mm. like you know <laughs> you give me that miss walker this. and them ghost rounds thank you <laughs> thank you <laughs> i'd like that that's what i'm looking for i know they'll never do it that'd be op but i really want it <laughs> it's a, i'd like that okay because um, that would make her great <laughs> The one that wasn't included in this link is the Hierophant rework. How, should we just bring that one up quickly? Sure. Uh, I, don't I don't know about it. Don't know if this is going to work. No, it, it did not work. Um, now you'll just see all my tabs and my shame. No, and your shame. <laughs> that looks all right, I think. So... Can you guys see, see it? So well, I gotta enhance it. We got yeah. This is apparently on <gasps> the expansion page. So wait, why does it say plus one minimum? Oh, because there are two minimums and then plus is max. Okay, that's a little weird, but all right. <laughs> okay, I see. I see. It's kind of sick actually he is interesting i've never i've played a hyro one time and then i specced into a guardian so that tells you how much i know about hyros <laughs> anybody got some initial observations besides bell okay i just i just opened it i don't i don't play hyros too often either i don't really i haven't done uh like a brand build actually and i don't really do totems either yeah i've been wanting I to did... try brands because um of something that uh, the guy said when i was on inspired learning um they were like the whole brand skill thing was reworked a few leagues ago and everybody said it was going to be yep. unplayable now and i was like i don't it's you had so much fun with brands didn't you Val? Listen, let me tell you why they think it's unplayable. Because you have to recast your brand. So, like, I can't just recall it and then it just jumps again. Yeah, you got to click a button. Ooh. <laughs> like, it's really not that bad. Honestly, especially now with the anomalous, like, Swift brand, which means you have to click buttons even more. But at the same time, anomalous Swift brand and, like, the, um, the... Uh, Storm brand that gives you chance to chain, it does the same kind of crawling effect that they wanted from old brands. They got really upset though. They were like, oh yeah, I can't just brand recall and it will refresh my duration and now I have to click brands. It's just terrible. Mm -hmm. Like it's really fine. It's absolutely fine. Brand? Plus four to minimum endurance, plus four to minimum power and plus one to maximum power and minimum and, and endurance. Wait, 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 wait. Those yeah, it's are, pluses, those, not were, minuses. I thought those were plus ones. Plus fours? Plus yeah, the first two are plus four. Plus four to minimum endurance. You can plus just walk around with four of each, and then you have oh, extra what? without having to spec into them. I thought that was a one. I'm losing no. my mind now, actually. I thought it was one, Whoa. one, and then one, and yeah, I was he, like, okay, that's a little comes, weird. Yeah, he comes preloaded with the thickness. He is like uh, background picture is perfect now. I mean, I know that's a staff, but it looks more like he's about to punch you with his fist. <laughs> <laughs> and that facial fist. expression too is like you just yeah. stole his last cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Yeah, my cupcake. I I don't know. I like he. I am already 
very interested in now there's six ascendancies i'm interested in playing this too many <laughs> i that's the problem that's the, sometimes you gotta leave it for the next league because there's just too much oh i just i don't know if i'm gonna have that much time to play yeah too many yeah. things <laughs> To back up, the, the way totems are now is kind of how I, w or the way brands are now is how I wish totems were. Mm -hmm. Like that sort of like turret placement while it moves with the, like, I don't know. They play like I, because that was like my biggest problem with totems was like the planting and the recasting and brands kind of move, but it doesn't get rid of like the activity of casting. So I thought it was mm -hmm. a, a neat compromise between the two sort of higher or like archetypes. I kind of like, I kind of like the recasting because i feel like i'm doing more yeah and like, i kind of like God feeling like I'm doing you play stuff. the game and click the <laughs> yeah buttons, like yeah exactly geez. like i just i just like to do some stuff yeah. <laughs> you know yeah no. that's actually one of the reasons i don't play minions that much is because they do the stuff and then i'm just there <laughs> i'm just <laughs> watching them do stuff and i'm like yeah i i don't know <laughs> like i kind of talked i mentioned this at the time but like I don't like minion builds every time I've tried playing one because I feel like you level with them. You level with SRS and then you switch a little bit. I hate SRS. I hate you just like, I hate together. the amount of time that it takes to like get the SR like the su to summon that mm. like when you're a new character, you have no defenses, you and you can't you have to stand still to summon them and then by the time you're done summoning enough that's gonna hurt something, you know, you just gonna run and get bopped by whatever is near you, including white mobs. <laughs> um so <laughs> I played that mob. for mayhem and just re solidified my like lack of interest of ever playing one again. Um because like I had a terrible time with mayhem and yeah. Uh, basically oh, there is a huge variety of uh of different types of skills that i want to play with based on all of these 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 ascendancies that the changes and everything and i'm just yeah i'm fucking thrilled like i don't know what they are yet and i wish we could maybe try and get another baited expectations before we start playing and be like these are our plans but maybe like when we get to do our one week in and talk about it mm. it's gonna be good Hopefully like, the ascendant gets that plus four plus four. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. I want that. I want it now. <laughs> I'll take a whole ascend for that shit. <laughs> okay. I feel like we have sufficiently covered the ascendancies and we'll probably just have a little bit of time to talk about new skills before we talk about uh certain leagues going core. So what did you guys think of the skills? and the mentioning of the skills during the announcement like mostly i kind of the biggest thing i think vel mentioned was orbs orbs the tag what is that all about it has you know how it's like physical melee orb yeah what is orb is like is that going to be is there going to be specific i don't know cluster jewels that are like your orb whatever does more orb stuff <laughs> like, you know? what, well, what is it in trinity support it specifically says it doesn't support orbs that's kind of rude things, one of those trigger <laughs> skills instant skills so if you're thinking mm. Ooh, this trinity support would be useful with this hydrosphere eh, not gonna work uh, is ball lightning an orb or I is it a ball we'll have to see it, it seems like a new tag um i mean it's a ball Winter orb is called orb, but is it going to be considered an orb? I know. It Stop isn't making sense. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I have so many questions about this orb tag and why, and like the significance of it. Is it significant? Does it even matter? Am I looking too deep into these orbs? No, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just immediately thought of like the looking deep into someone's eyes thing as you said that because people sometimes I'm looking deep into what's gonna Kathy, happen is deep into your orbs, <laughs> please. Like in two, three, no, like let's say in six weeks on that baited expectation, six weeks from now, we're gonna finally understand the implication of orbs, and then Belly is gonna be like the Charlie Day like conspiracy theory <laughs> picture. Like I told you, I told you this was orbs. significant. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. 
been drawing the conclusions, man. Conclusions. <laughs> that's what I feel. I'm so cute. The that's that's an interesting new tag. <laughs> I'm very very intrigued by it. I don't know about. They said forty new. Did they mention Molten Strike in that rework? Because Keck fucking W. <laughs> no, they're gonna nerf it again. There's still like six people yeah. that play it, so it's got it. I mean, now like, minus two projectiles, minus ten area of effect. Done. Now <laughs> one projectile and it's small. <laughs> what what's the name of the new what's the name of the new orb thing that does the like cold and lightning or is it just like all elements? Hydrosphere. Yeah. Yeah, the hydrosphere. It sounds too sci-fi to be part of Excel. <laughs> it does sound kind of it has a goofy name, honestly. And the fact that you can like move it around, like when they had the little preview and this like person's just going like orb, orb. Or, like, this is goofy. This is really silly. <laughs> They're trying to introduce more two button builds and combos to slow the game down. And this is just another version of that. It's really cool in the fact that it does like the area and you can drag it around and clear mm. and stuff like that, but it requires you to do a series of actions first. Mm -hmm. Um the the thing that I thought of which which like really spoke to me was like this is very POE too because they they want you to use multiple skills in order to like give it the extra elemental because like they're like, like oh we're using a combination of on strike and something good, else is you just shoot stuff through it and then just drag that guy that bad boy around if you have like enough duration scaling <laughs> and otherwise like then you fought like followed up with some sort of like herald clear or pop clear or something like that like i don't think it's without its merits i think it'll be like kind of uh it's still going to be a two-button play style versus the usual just like turret and explode sort of you know, Zoom meta, but. Oh no, I'm into it. I'm going to drench all my foes with my silly water orb. I'm into it. <laughs> it's just going to be the, it. like, yeah, it just, it reminded me of this, basically the, like, going towards multiple six links meta of PoE2. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, yeah, that was I, what I, I was thinking. I was like, okay, so this is, this is designed in with the, like, ability to have, like, all of those links in mind. You know, with Elementalist and Guaranteed Shocks and Chill on Hit, you know. Yeah. Since basically once you shock it, it's doing um, lightning damage. If you don't do anything or you freeze it, it's doing cold damage. And there's already a lot of cluster jewels. I don't know if it's smaller mediums that have crossovers between cold and lightning damage. Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm, I want to try it out. Mm -hmm. I, I just think it looks super goofy, but I'm, I thought it looked also very fun. <laughs> I just really hope it's not this league's crackling lance. Oh, because I, God, I, I yeah. want it to be actually good. Aren't yeah, they the already it's fixing it. Oh, don't jinx it. But when they give I, a level one numbers, I'm like, I'm just not going to, I'm going to not look at that. Give me the level 20 numbers and then I can decide if it's going to be good. Like, mm. honestly, I think, didn't they both? <laughs> Did they put Firestorm and like we're reworking, we're fixing Firestorm? It's like you just did that last week. <laughs> Honestly, I think that I was like that. a we're sorry. I saw we're that. Sorry, I Firestorm was, like, was bad. That was the equivalent of you know, like when you give an order on a cat, like on a ship, and then somebody else is like belay that, and I was like, oh, so they just belay <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, and I think they're gonna try to. Fixed Cracklands, but guess what? I'm not going to be duped into trying it out on League Start again. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> you can't get I me, GGG. And, yeah. then and, then, and then it's like bad by like Act 7. You're like, why am I doing this to myself? Maybe I'll get good. I just have to keep suffering. Oh, I just need a five yeah. link. Yeah. Just need a five. Just need that He's five. going to farm this really tabula. <laughs> I really need the six link now. Actually, the six link will fix it. <laughs> Oh God, yeah, please, please. I'm if anything, like if they hopefully, hopefully make lightning strike jump over gaps in the way that purifying not pure actually purifying flame doesn't either, and purifying flame jump over gaps. I'll be so happy. Cause I think if wave of conviction can go over gaps, then why the hell can't lightning strike projectiles? It's some BS. Why why not? And it gets stuck on rocks. Like you can be by this tiny little rock and hit, and then all your projectiles are actually just stuck on the rock, and it's kind of nonsense. So please, I hope they fix it because I love it. 
I love it so much. <laughs> it's a great skill that has been dead since beta <laughs> for so long. But I want it to come back. Dead it will, since beta is a very long time. It's been dead for so long, man. It's been... But it was really good in beta. It was really good. Okay. I have like rose-colored glasses about it. I'll keep wearing them. Um, <laughs> we have been talking for two hours now, and there's still a few things left to discuss. To be continued, if you are listening to this one, um, it will be finished in another episode. Thank you for listening. <laughs> 